Hey guys, Jake here. So today I'm going to fix this Hartke B60 amp that's having problems with its input jack. By the way guys, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. We've got a lot of great videos coming up ahead. So as you can see, as I play with this jack, there's some static happening. Now, take a listen for yourself. As you can see, only in certain positions will there ever be a clear signal coming out. That seems to be our problem. Now let's go and try and fix this. So the first thing we got to do is open up this amp. Now I'm using my electric screw gun here to just take out all these six screws that hold this head up into this cabinet. Once it's out, this head slides right out from the back and you're able to access all of the electronics. And once it is out, you're going to notice that it's still connected to the cabinet via the speaker cable right there. That speaker cable needs to be disconnected very simply by just pulling a little bit with some force. And it comes right out and you can take this head and put it right on top of the amp. Now here are the two input jacks for this amp. They are soldered onto the PCB and we need access to underneath the PCB. So by taking off that ground screw, this ground screw and taking this wire off of the effects loop, we should be able to isolate any connections from the chassis to the PCB. Next, we're going to take off these little knobs so we could get access to the bolts that bolt these potentiometers to the chassis. And using a wrench, you could just take off all these little nuts. And once that is done and that screw underneath is taken out, as you can see right here, this whole thing will slide right out. The next thing to tackle is these ground screws. They're just held in with a little nut and a Phillips screwdriver. Once those are out, you could unplug that effects loop cable and you get access to underneath the PCB. Now right here are two cold solder joints on this input jack. The whole input jack was actually shaky in the PCB. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to solder these in place. and as I was soldering these in place, I realized that the solder is not sticking to the PCB. That's because the traces have somehow vanished. Therefore, we're just going to take out this whole jack. We're going to clean up the jack. We're going to clean up the PCB. And then we're going to re-solder in this jack. So now you may ask yourself, what are you going to do about those missing traces on the board? And I'll show you I found the elegant solution for that and I'll show that in a minute. But I just wanted to mention guys that if you do need a new jack, I will link one in the description for you to find for yourself and I will be linking all of the tools that I'm using here in the description so you can buy them yourself if you don't have them. Now here I am soldering in the two joints that actually have a trace left on the PCB. These were very easy to solder. As you can see, the solder just melts right onto those contacts with ease. Now, here is my solution. I can use little jumper wires. Now, to determine where these jumper wires need to jump to and from, you need to look at your PCB board. You will see a bunch of little traces between contacts. What you need to do is trace the contacts of the jack to one other connection on the board that you could solder a jumper to. As you can see what I'm doing there, I soldered that top pin of the jack to the leftmost pin of the jack because those two traces connected. Now the middle pin on the right side of this jack, I traced the PCB back to that upper connection up there. That's why I placed that jumper there. Now the only thing is to reassemble everything. So I'm going to plug back in this effects loop back into this PCB and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten up this PCB back onto the chassis using that one screw from underneath as you can see right there. Next I'm going to make sure these grounds are properly connected to the chassis. Now if these grounds are not securely fastened to the chassis you're going to end up with lots of buzzing noises. And in the worst case, you're going to get yourself a shock if you touch the wrong piece of metal. 
Now, once these things are all tightened up, you can just use your fingers and a little Phillips screwdriver to tighten them up really nice, as you can see right there. You're going to move on to getting the jacks and the potentiometers screwed back down to the chassis. Now, as you can see here, I'm just showing you that I'm doing it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Once that's done, the only thing left to do is to plug back in the speaker to the head and slip this head right into the cabinet. Now, once this is slipped in, you could zip back in all of these screws and you're going to have a fully functioning amp once again. Now, let me show you the results. And sorry, I don't have my bass with me. I only have my guitar, so I'm playing a guitar through the bass amp, but it still shows the same thing. It's working now. Just a reminder guys, all the parts and tools are listed and linked in the description. And thanks again guys for watching, please like and comment below if you enjoyed this video. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button so you can get access to content like this in the future.